Welcome to the Mark J. Ryan Experience with your host, Mark J. Ryan, mind-body expert with over 25 years experience in NLP, hypnosis, and coaching, taking you on the road to self-discovery, exploring different parts of yourself, including spirituality, the latest research into the brain and the mind, and how it can help you attain more of what you want including wealth and money. Mark will be coaching you in the latest technologies of change. From interesting fields such as hypnosis, NLP, and brainwashing. You'll also learn how to improve your relationships and love life. Learn the newest techniques in sales and marketing to improve your income. You'll learn all this in an easy and fun way to understand using current events. Get ready to change your life for the better with the Mark J. Ryan Experience. Hey everybody, it's Mark J. Ryan. Welcome to the Mark J. Ryan Experience. I'm going to try something new here. It's been a while since I've done some podcasting or video casts. And over the uh, last few years, I've been doing a lot of research in many different areas. So I've got a ton of information that I want to get out there thing about it is I want to create products and put information out there but there's so much information coming in at such a rate that I can't do both so I'm gonna to have to pick and choose between what products I make and what information I put out there the other thing is is uh, years ago I did a podcast I had a podcast it became pretty pretty popular back in the mid uh, about 2004 2005 that that area there and uh, played with it it was just audio it wasn't video. Um, I'm doing this now because I want to kind of uh, have the video for people to watch if they want to watch it on YouTube or anywhere else. But I'm also going to take the audio out of it and then you can listen to it as a podcast if you'd like. And what I did with that podcast years ago was basically uh, talk about current events, talk about current research. I would uh, tell some jokes and incorporate NLP and hypnosis. Uh, do some things with brainwashing, just whatever interested me at the time. Um, I've been doing coaching and therapy with people for many, many years. So a lot of times just telling a story or talking about different things uh, where people are listening in, in an easy type of a way, relaxed way, the information seems to get in better. And uh, over the last few years, as a matter of fact, today, and yesterday, two different people are like, when are you going to start podcasting again? I said, well, I'm not into the subject matter that I was into back then and haven't been in uh, for a long period of time. But I'm doing more stuff on brain science, NLP, hypnosis, things like that, um, and spirituality. And every one of them are saying, great, that's what we're doing, too. I thought, well, that's pretty cool then. Maybe... Uh, they'd be interested. But the one thing they kept saying over and over again is we just want to hear you talk about stuff. It, you know, you help me make changes in my life. Just listening to the podcast helped make changes in my life. I'm a different person now. I've, I've, I'm a therapist now where in a, I was going to be an auto mechanic and now they're a therapist. I had many guys over the period of time saying, you know, they didn't think their life was worth living and considering taking their lives. Once they got some of these aha experiences and realize they could shift their focus, change their focus, change their mind, change what they thought in their mind, how they put their awareness on certain things, where they put their attention, that the experience of their life shifted. There's a lot of people in life having a great life. There's a lot of people in life not having too good of a life. I mean, the last couple of weeks, it's been really tough. I got, the, I got this flu. The whole family got this flu and it's two weeks and we're just now coming out of it. I still have a real deep cough from it. Um, but didn't want to get out of bed for two weeks. I called my aunt back east and uh, talked to her a little bit. She runs uh, the head of immuniz immunization and vir viral infections of a hospital and said, hey, look, you know, am I dying or is this something that's going around? And apparently it's something that's going around. So, uh, you know, that, that experience wasn't that great to me. However, during that experience, I had some quite amazing things happen. Again, I'm starting to get into the flow now. This is how I used to do the podcast where I had a kind of semi-loose agenda of how I was going to do things. And it seemed like by the end of the hour to an hour and a half that I would do a podcast, I usually got around to all the different things. 
And that's what we're going to begin to do here again and start uh, with the video and with the podcast. Uh, the main things, and I've got a little list down here I'm going to be looking at. The main thing is about self-discovery, discovering more about who you are. You're here on this planet for 70 to 90 years, hopefully even maybe longer. And we're conditioned by our culture and our, by our society to, to see things, to uh, pay attention to certain things in a certain way, which gives us our experience. And a lot of times we don't even know that there's other ways of looking at things or we get conditions. We're creatures of adaptation. So we adapt to things pretty quickly. And usually it gets down to the point where required minimal movement to do anything throughout your day. So we get it in. We understand what it is like driving to work. Do you really remember every step of the way? Most of the time you just don't even think about it. Uh, you get there. And it's gone down into the unconscious mind. So your awareness is on something else. Usually you're thinking about something, uh, listening to a radio, maybe a song brings you back to memory from the 80s, from the 90s, so even maybe even further back. And is that, that, that's the way the brain brings your attention and your focus. But is that the optimal way you want to live life? And my study has been over the 20 something years since I discovered NLP. Before that, I knew about hypnosis and studied that and a lot of esoteric things since I was a kid, a teenager it really got me interested. My father got me interested in that and um, studied different ways of looking at things. And I would have these aha moments, so many of them, and to say, okay, today I'm going to view life as if it's this way. And even though I go back to my life of who I am, as we all do, that experience of playing with those ideas, those concepts changing my awareness, my attention, uh, thinking in a certain strategy in a different way uh, has helped uh, the experience of my life become richer, wealthier, wealthier. And this is part of what I want to teach on the podcast is to say, as I go through my experience, the Mark J. Ryan experience, what's your experience? And what I noticed from the podcast and the experience, experiment, that that's what 2004 I started, so that's like eight years, nine years ago. Um, the results, I've got a, a file this thick of testimonials from people about changes and shifts in their way of thinking in their life for the better from people around them. Sometimes wives and girlfriends and sisters would write me and say, hey, what, what happened? What happened or what are you doing? This is great. There's been a shift and a change. So I look at it as tools, different types of mind tools, and it's about self-discovering, discovering more of who you are. Um, we're, again, we're, we live in America, USA, you might be in Australia, you might be in Russia, who knows where, South, South America. And you're, you're conditioned to think a certain way. And sometimes we think other things maybe look goofy if we have a, the dress. If I'm in the United States, if I think about somebody, the way they dress, maybe in the Middle East somewhere, you know, putting on some of it, how, how that might look funny or that might look silly. But maybe I try it on and when I'm in the middle of the desert, go, wow, I understand why these guys dress this way. And I get new information. I get new data in based on trying it and experiencing it. Not to say that I'm going to continue to wear that material, but to know that it's there and then how does that shape or texture my experience in life every day? And so the brain and the mind, again, wants to condition things, make it easy so you don't have to do a whole lot. We'll go back to ways of thinking, similar ways of thinking, doesn't want to kind of go outside of the box. But yet for you to enjoy life fully, to get the best out of life, you got to step outside that box. And I'm stepping out and experimenting with that all the time, doing it with other people that I'm coaching, people around me, conversations with friends, family, uh, mentors, to say what shifts this experience, what changes it. I kind of go into something a little personal. Uh, you know that, that there's there was the 12, 12, 12 deal, which is numbers, and then people, all the different meanings people made about the possibility of this is a number on a calendar, like there was going to be meaning or something special happening to that. And, and, and you know what, if they make the meaning something special to them and they enjoy it and it makes their life better for that day, I'm, I don't want to say anything uh, against that or to them, enjoy it. And uh, if it really makes a big shift, I want to know about it. I want to model it. I want to go and say what really happened. Maybe I could adopt that or parts of that to change and shift my experience. And then you had the uh, 12, 21, 12, 
again, a lot of people think it was the end of the world, the end of the Mayan calendar, so many different things uh, that I studied about what people thought was going to happen during that period of time. And the closer we got to it, the, the less uh, those beliefs had a percentage in probably most people's mind, including my own. But weird things happened to me on both those days. Life-changing things happened to me on both those days uh, in my consciousness, in my personal experience on 12-12-12, uh, which I'll talk about in a future podcast. But it really shifted uh, my perception of heart and love and where we are by getting an email from a close friend of mine uh, that had experienced his mother's funeral and how he experienced and what he went through. It's so foreign to the idea, the concept of me. But when he talked to me about it and he wrote to me in that letter, just the considering of it, again, the focus, where my mind's focus, and um, put me into that emotionally before I was prepared. We all have our defenses and preparations saying, well, yeah, okay. Before I go there, I'm going to think about it. And a lot of times just jumping over into it gives you an experience, uh, sometimes one that you're not ready for. I wasn't quite ready for that, and it was a quite emotional experience. So 12-12-12 was a big day for me. And then uh, as I first started to get sick, it was right in the beginning of it. My immune system was probably running high. On 12-21-12, uh, I had a download, what I call a download. And I don't know if any of you are familiar, but you get some of the times the aha experiences or you, you're, you're, you're to a point of frustration where you're trying to figure something out saying, this is none of this is making sense. None of this makes sense. Why is this happening? How come I can't put these two concepts together or several different concepts together? And I was going through a process listening to some guy about how the brain works and reconsolidation of memory and uh, something very interesting. And as I was going through the process, I considered, I said, what if I did it this way? What if I thought about it this way? And then it was an experience. It was almost like, you know, the, the sometimes you see packages wrapped up and they have this metal band around it and you cut the metal band and phew, it kind of pops apart because it's got a little pressure keeping things together. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it was like that around my chest. It like popped. It opened me up. And then all of a sudden, everything made sense. All this information from the, I was, I started going back and listening to things over hours and hours and hours, uh, and everything connected and everything made sense. And it was like a process that I had been looking for, kind of a, like a Rosetta Stone process of what makes therapy work. What is the real point when things change with people? And modeling that, say, from many different modalities of change and shifting, what works? and spirituality to say, okay, when people manifest stuff, when they get stuff, whether they want to put it into the realm of goals, you shift your mind, you focus on something, you put, how does that work? What is the commonality or what is the successful piece of making that work? And I got to tell you, the, 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 a lot of times what works in therapy with people, what works when they, with somebody when they clear an issue opens them up and something magical begins to happen. There's a, there's something magical in how they process that in the energy. I don't know how many times I've sat with somebody and all of a sudden ask them a question or have them consider something or maybe they're in trance and then all of a sudden it's, I don't know, you have to experience it. You have to go through it where it opens up. You can, I can feel it. They're going through it. They're having the experience. They're shifting. But selfishly, that's one of the things I like about therapy is when somebody shifts and they see it and they're, oh, oh, I get it. I get it for the, yeah, yeah. Now it makes, okay, that makes sense. And then this makes sense. And when that happens, it's like an energy, you know, you got nuclear uh, fusion and nuclear fission, you know, fusion, you're putting some atoms together and the, new, the fusion bomb is more powerful than the fission bomb. The fission bomb takes it apart. When you're taking things apart with people and putting them back together, there's something like that that happens. And uh, on 12 21 12, that happened with me. So here I am thinking uh, nothing's going to happen. The world isn't coming to an end. This is all BS. It's a meaning that people applied, and it's great that they have their certain meanings. But what do they do, you know, after it's all over and it doesn't happen? And on those two dates that I didn't have any meaning for, two meaningful things happened to me. Uh, two of the biggest things in my life. So this shift on, on uh, 12, uh, 21, 12, it, it has 
has me looking at how I do therapy differently. Because I realized that because I've done therapy myself over the years, part of the deal with me is this, if I'm going to help other people go into therapy, then I better help myself and be in therapy. And people say, well, you know, why don't you do certain things on, with yourself, like losing weight? And I say, sometimes the best heart surgeon in the world can't operate on their own heart. And you have to go to somebody else. You have to work with somebody else that's really good. And I, thank God, I've had some wonderful mentors and people that I've done coaching and therapy with. And I started to narrow down through all those sessions of the shift and the change. There was a certain process that happened in me, but I didn't have enough of a perspective to kind of get what that was that made the shift. When I work with people in coaching sessions or doing seminars, when they would shift, it would be the same type of thing, but I just couldn't get a grasp on the process. When I went through that process, I also had an awareness on what I was doing as I went through the process. Because we were talking about that, the guy was talking about the process and how it worked. And I got to tell you, there's nothing that I haven't played with this on that it doesn't work. It is like a Rosetta Stone for what makes therapy work for what makes manifestation, what makes goal setting work, whatever it is, it's, it's magical. And I've studied a lot of old esoteric, um, books and processes and it fits perfectly in, into that process too. So it was a pretty magical day for me to go through that. And I want to start bringing that and sharing that with other people and also teaching that and, and, and into seminars and making products with it because it's, uh, it's pretty mind blowing. It's pretty mind blowing how it works and, and what it'll do and how it'll give you a different perspective in your life. That's what I want to do with this show. That's what I want to do with this program. And without the straight neuroscience, I want to tell you a story about it. I'm a storyteller. I love to tell stories, uh, whether they're real stories or made up stories. Within the story is the process of the story. And if your unconscious mind begins to get the process of how things work, uh, the content isn't really important. And to me, the, uh, the content is important because the content is something that the conscious mind tends to focus on and the unconscious mind focuses more on process. And if you can get those two working together, uh, where you get the content and the conscious mind understanding what's going on, because a lot of time, a lot of therapy is like, let's deal with the unconscious. Let's get the problem that the conscious is bad and it's the ego and you want to get. And I'm like, no, that's that's the part that is in us that makes us survive. Can we work with that part? Can we use that part as an ally that can join with us? Milton Erickson, I think the world's greatest hypnotherapist uh, that's ever lived. Uh, they're the culmination of everything that I've read through him or listened or been taught by other people about Milton Erickson. One of the things he said was that he learned towards the end of his life was that uh, to have successful, and this is part of what the download was, to have a successful um, processing, a person to be uh, well-adjusted, normal, process information the best, it is to have a rapport between the conscious and the unconscious mind, to have a rapport, a friendship between the conscious, how they process the content, the material, and the processing of it. And the, the, the therapy that I do, the coaching that I do, is all about that, is to give you conscious awareness of what's going on so you can understand it, and unconscious processing. And when they work together, there's magic that happens. And now more specifically, they work together in a certain way with the memory and how the memory processes information. And the, the, what they're finding out now through neuroscience about how there's a window of opportunity, uh, what they call reconsolidation, of a specific way, not just bringing up the memory, but how you a certain way of bringing up the memory in certain contexts and process when you combine that together. It's magical. So now we're getting it down to where we could take that process and it doesn't matter if you do new age stuff. It doesn't matter if you're doing strictly science stuff and you're an atheist and you don't believe in God or you fully believe in God. Um, whatever way you process or you do your therapy or you do your work with people, this process is the proven method of how the brain is now making the change. And there, there's a way to take you through that step by step. And that's what I'm working on. And again, bringing this, it's new, it's exciting. 
it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun because now you, you can have more of a knowledge of not only the, the work that you're doing, but specifically how that work is going into the brain, how it's being seen by the brain, maybe how to work it together with uh, what the issue is and, and do it in a certain way. Now you really have a process of doing this yourself successfully, not just the success of what you have in that modality that you like or that you use or that your profession is. But now we're going to take the process of what they're learning from brain science and make it work together. Uh, really fun, really exciting times coming up ahead. Big thing I like is questions. Questions. If you got a question, if you want to know something, again, some of the subjects I want to go into, uh, hypnosis, NLP, and brainwashing. Uh, love that. It's, it, to me, it's fun. And when we go through the process of hypnosis and NLP and talking about brainwashing, I'll probably be using things from everyday life and saying, okay, this is how it works. A lot of times we just take the, the information, the bland information, and it's boring. It's not exciting. Um, but if you can integrate it into what you're doing in your daily life, maybe even bring up a certain movie, talk about a movie, how that works, or a relationship we see in Hollywood, maybe something on television, might be something on the Internet, uh, current, current events, what's going on with current events. Um, to say, okay, this person said this, and then this one said that. How does that work together? You can kind of explain it a little bit about what their thinking is, both their thinkings, and then how it gels or how it doesn't gel together, which then will give you an idea of the hypnosis and the NLP and some of the brainwashing, and then you can start looking at yourself and say, how do I do this myself? Uh, spirituality, that's going to be a big part of the show. Um, there's a lot of people in my audience uh, that I know that aren't very spiritual. However, again, are you flexible enough in your reality to take somebody else's model of the world? Because if you're in sales, if you're doing therapy, you're going to have to work with people. You don't necessarily have to, but you're probably going to be working with people that have different belief systems. Are you able to work with those belief systems even though your belief system is different? So when I say spirituality, generally, um, I consider myself a Christian. However, I'm open to many different faiths, studied so many different faiths, new thought movement. I like a lot of the new thought and what's going on and how your brain and your mind, obviously being into the neuroscience and hypnosis and NLP, work to change your experience and how to integrate spiritual processes in everyday life. So it's not something that you have to spend a whole lot of time going into. Again, changing your awareness, changing your thinking, where you put your your thoughts, your awareness, and for how long a period of time and on what. Uh, we'll practice different things and meditations. I'm going to do a meditation with you today. First meditation is going to be gratitude, thank, thankful meditation um, that will go along with this podcast. And I'm going to ask you questions, certain questions that, that uh, are going to tweak you. But I want some response back. Part of this is this is going to be a flow. It's going to be my experience and what's going on. But I also want to include you in this experience. What is going on in your life? What do you need to know? What questions do you have? What things are you you're uncertain about that maybe I can help you with using these new processes um, and make this back and forth? And I, I don't care what direction it goes. And if it starts to be more spiritual, if it starts to go more into neuroscience and brain stuff, Wealth and money, wealth and money every day. What's your money situation? What's your wealth? Huh? What is it that's stopping you from getting to where you want to be? This has been something big for the last five, seven, ten years that, that I worked a lot on and studied and got into finding out what is it that makes successful people, how they think, how they process information different than you and me. And then if we start to adopt that, we start to get similar results. So give me your feedback where you're stuck. What do you want to know about that? Uh, again, coaching, relationships, and love. Um, again, it, it, it all, we look at the content of what's going on, but with relationships and love, a lot of times that's about process. Your self-relationship, your self-love, how does that work? And then when you go out as an independent human being in a dependent world to interact with other people, where might you have issues there that need to be cleaned up or issues that you can do better? Again, who are the people that, that have the best relationships? Uh, learn to exhibit love. I mean, when I, I, I remember going to a Michael Hall seminar years ago, 
back in 2000, I think it was, in San Diego. And he had modeled out uh, love and forgiveness and resilience and joy and stuff like this, all stuff like, I know this stuff. But he says, I know you know it, but just look at the way that I've modeled it. Try it on and see if there's any difference with it for you, if it makes a difference. Everything I tried on was different and better. And I adopted it. Those ways of thinking about what love is, what joy is, what resilience is, um, work better than what I thought. So we have a certain way of doing it. We find out other people's model and we take tools, you know, and think about it as making a cake. You know, you have made a cake a certain way. And people say, have you tried this? Have you tried that way of doing it? Maybe add this ingredient before this ingredient and add this other stuff. Um, you try it and you're like, oh my gosh, this has totally changed my experience. That's what I want this to be about. It's not just what I'm going through in experience, which is going to be primary on there. But what are you going through? What are you experiencing that's different that might help other people? Or you can give us some insight or maybe you need some insight. doesn't matter to me. Ask me questions, write me emails, and um, I would say Mark at Mark J. Ryan. Mark, M-A-R-K, at M-A-R-K, the initial J, R-Y-A-N, dot com. Mark at Mark J. Ryan, dot com. Let's make that the official um, place where you can write me emails, too. The other thing is sales and marketing. I really enjoy the sales process to me. Whoever you are, when you go out and interact with somebody else and you want to share an idea, whether it's a friend on the phone or somebody at work, you're selling them. You got to get their interest. You got to get their, their open mind. How much of an open mind do they have? Are they going to buy your idea or not? You begin to think how you're going to formulate that to this person to get them to understand it in the way you want them to understand it. So sales is paramount to everything that you're doing in life, everything that I'm doing, everything that everybody's doing. It is the interaction between ourself with different parts of ourselves. We sell ourselves on a lot of different things or not sell ourselves in, in, inside. We'll, we'll deal with that and talk about that. And then everything you do with any interaction with anybody in the real world is sales. It involves sales. It, the word sales to a lot of people, it has a negative connotation, but let's maybe we'll figure out another word to use or talk about the process where you can start to understand and say, wow, if I just do that and make that shift and that change, say that to that person instead of this, that changes everything. Now, now they love me more or now they want to be around me more. Or now they want to buy my product more. Or now they want to be involved with my company more. Maybe they want to invest in me or my company. Yeah. Yeah, it makes that much of a difference in how you understand the, how people process information, how you process information, and then how you process information between each other. It can make all the difference in the world. And current, current events. Again, we talked about current events. So a lot of different things on my mind. Don't know where it's going to go. Um, I'm excited about doing something new. I was going to do this about two weeks ago until I got sick. So uh, then I wanted to do it the first of the year, uh, which basically today's the second, but I wanted to really start something yesterday. Still wasn't feeling up to it yesterday. Feeling a little better today and, uh, again, excited. Now the rest of the, the video, I've got some uh, footage. I just, just I want to put something out front, too, is um, I have a tendency to be a perfectionist. And so I want everything to be perfect. I wanted to have this video filmed on my big cameras. I've got big five, $6,000 cameras that are just perfect HD. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take the little camera out and I'm going to make mistakes. And it's not going to be perfect. The angle may not be perfect, whatever. I'm going to do this. Because if I try to be perfect in it, sometimes it'll take me a year or two to get a product out. And I've got about 15 products that are sitting there that are anywhere from 70 to 90% done uh, that I'm ready to put out there with new information. However, that perfectionist in me sometimes keeps me from doing it. I don't know if you have something similar. I want to deal with that and work with that. So today I said, you know what, I'm going to use the webcam to start to do the intro. I'm going to take my little Kodak ZI-8 out there, do some filming, talk about things. To introduce you to me, to kind of give you an idea of how I speak, how I talk, what I think about, what I look like, and hopefully you'll join me in the process because, there's again, there's going to be a lot of information. 
There's going to be a lot of stories. There's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you'll join me. Let me know you're there. And let's make this into something that not only changes you, changes me. Let's change the world with it. And to say, how do we have uh, the technology of cooperation, which was my last DVD, Technology of Cooperation. How do we learn to start getting along better in this crazy world? And how do we learn to look at the world differently? I've got my own crap on that. I'm sure you got yours. But again, through the process, which I know has worked from the last podcast, the different amazing, wonderful, just touching things that people have been through and, and the stories they've written me um, about the changes that have made just from doing a simple podcast. Now we're going to make it more into a vidcast. And uh, let's see what happens with it. Join me. Have fun. I'm going to show you. You're going to see some videos where I'm going to go out. I was out today uh, showing some snow back pack, talking a little bit about the March J. Ryan experience, how that came about, and something weird happened, which was pretty cool. Um, may not have been for the guy in the truck that it happened to. And then I went down to City Park and filled up some water at the headwaters, which I talk a lot about, which is amazing water. And then from me filling up the water, it took me about 15 minutes to do it because it was so slippery there. I've got some video, and I'm just going to do a meditation, a, a thank and a thankful and gratitude meditation. Uh, the video isn't, isn't the best. It actually gets dark. The lighting actually sucks at one point, but it's more about closing your eyes, going through a body experience of gratitude and thanks. And um, I'll put those out separately, too, so you don't have to listen to this whole podcast. You can um, listen to it through the meditation itself, by itself. And uh, that's it. Hopefully, like the introduction, I uh, put some. I've got a guy making some music for it right now. If you're a musician out there, I've put this out there before when I had my first podcast. And you want to try to do something with the intro? You think you can make the intro better? And uh, you want some recognition? And I'll put you out there and your website and everything like that. Give it a shot. I've got a guy making it. Um, again, the, the the music on it. I'm going to probably change and cut it a little bit, make it shorter so it's not so long. It's about a minute and 12 seconds. But I wanted to show you what I had done, what I've been working on for the last couple of months. Um, part-time, part-time on it. And that's about it. I can ramble on and keep going on, which uh, some of you might like it, some of you might not. But hopefully, again, you get something out of it. Enjoy the little videos that I've got. And then the meditation. And I'll be talking to you again soon, hopefully sooner than later. And again, I thrive off of feedback. Let me know what you think. If you want to be a part of this, uh, what interests you? What interests you? Because I got to tell you, I get the amount of information. It can go in any direction. I can take it and take the process and help you understand it in whatever way you want it textured. And uh, I'm going to put it out how I like it. But if you want it in a different way, Let's work together and make this happen. This is Mark J. Ryan. Thanks. Looking forward to doing this new video cast and podcast. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. This is Mark J. Ryan, and welcome to the Mark J. Ryan Experience. I'm here in Mount Shasta on the 2nd of January on a crisp, clear day. It's probably around, I don't know, 30s, maybe 40s without the snow but the snow brings it down about 10 degrees and this is going to be the initial in the first podcast that we're going to do video cast podcast this here is one of my favorite places to go a lot of times i like to come here and watch the stars at nighttime as you can see it's an incredible view and what do i want to do with mark j ryan experience i'm not quite sure yet i've got uh i doing a lot of research the last couple of years on neuroscience, on coaching, on health, relationships, you name it. It's just been a plethora of things, spirituality. And as I talk to people, sometimes I get into conversations for hours at a time and people are saying, man, you need to record this and put this out there. You know, it's shifting them. They're getting shifts and what do I say with a shift it's basically when you're reading something or studying something and all of a sudden things come together and you get the the aha experience and you are kind of in that in-between state maybe where you're get the sun blasting right at me but hopefully I'm getting me and the background back there but what is that that's the aha experience where you start to see your reality and your world differently and a lot of us we get stuck when I'm doing the coaching and teaching 
or just having conversations with people about things in their lives what happens we get accustomed to doing certain things in certain ways and viewing certain things or in our life and we get into a rut and basically a rut doesn't have to be a negative thing it just has to be something that you're you're doing over and over and over again and sometimes we forget about that there's other ways of looking at things and a lot of times we're not even conscious of ways of looking at things that exist and sometimes like I said reading a book even a science fiction novel or a movie we start to consider things that we never thought about before and it changes well the coaching and what they're finding out with neuroscience is that it's where do you place your attention and how do you place it what do you do with your attention and with the Mark J Ryan experience my experience in life is all about that it's learning that doing research and creating products creating talks seminars to help people launch into different viewpoints different perspectives and to enjoy life more so if you consider your life and how you perceive it as a telescope looking through a telescope we want to expand the size of that telescope and I start to put in ideas and thoughts where you can begin to consider life in different ways that it really increase your experience how you experience this sometimes it works sometimes it won't sometimes a combination of several different things so anyways that's the intention of it from many different perspectives like I said relationships spirituality neuroscience coaching I'm gonna take it from many many politics I've been into a lot of politics lately and uh, you know trying to understand what's going on with me why I feel certain ways and a lot of times people try to cover that up well I don't want other people to think about me like that or I don't want other people to know that I have thoughts like that to me it's it's interesting to explore that because when you discover that and find out a lot of times what's underneath it is a whole nother value system that changes how you think about it or you go underneath it or you go behind it or on the side of it and discover what the impetus was in a memory will come back maybe or a partial memory from when you were a kid and you find out it's not even your belief system it was something somebody else said to you that's stuck in your head and you took it on as your voice as your belief so if that's the case now with your present experience if you had the chance to go back there and say hey I, I think I would choose to look at it this way with my current experience how does that happen let's explore that a little bit with the Mark J Ryan experience let's talk about the Mark J Ryan experience how did the Mark J Ryan experience come in we were thinking about a name Kathy and I It was actually a couple months ago and I'm walking through the snow here it's a little slippery so I'm gonna be looking down and we were goofing and a friend of mine a guy that I met down in uh, Cabo San Lucas Randy he had a seminar back in the late 60s or early 70s called the 48 hour experience with Ken Ken Kesey's I think his name was anyways he was telling me about the 48 hour experience and I thought what a, what a, a great name for a seminar the 48 hour experience what could you do with somebody in 48 hours and I've had that chance to work with people in that 48 hour period of time do a little bit more of a scan kind of keep an eye on more where my feet are right now but uh, I was kidding around with it, thinking about different names, what other names, what, what, what kind of experience. And then there was a seminar that I was going to go to last, last summertime, I think it was. Might even have been in the spring. But it was the Bo Eason experience. A guy named Bo Eason. And I was thinking, sitting in my bedroom, well, what about something like the Mark J. Ryan experience? And just as I said that, the lamp next to my bed started making all kinds of electrical noises dipped down to black the rest of the lights in the room that were on the overhead lights stayed on so it wasn't electricity but it was this particular lamp and it went to black and then it came back on now I've had this lamp for years and uh, there's some guy just spinning out right there he's trying to I don't know if you saw that if I caught that on film or not but he came by trying to make some noise there he goes he just hit it again boom he just hit the wall down there not sure what he's doing local nut gone in it 
spun out. There we go. So here I am talking about the Mark J. Ryan experience and weird shit happens again. Stuff, excuse me. Anyways, um, so it, 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 I've had it for years. The lamp, it's a special bulb that I bought from Sweden or Finland. It's a uh, full spectrum bulb. It was like eight or nine dollars, and it hasn't happened since. But uh, that same day or the next day, I'd gotten up to use the restroom late at night, extremely quiet in the house. And uh, as I was sitting there, um, the thought crossed my mind about the Mark J. Ryan experience again. And I heard a chime. I mean, as loud as I've heard a chime, I heard a chime. And I spent the next 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, looking for what could have possibly caused that chime. But in a different context, in a different place, it happened for a third time. And I heard the chime, and I know it wasn't in the same room. So I don't know if that's my brain playing tricks on me or what it was. But I figured, okay, name sounds like fun. Mark J. Ryan experience. What can I do with the Mark J. Ryan experience? And that is, if somebody has an experience and they tell you a story, and that story gets to you and shifts you, and it makes a difference, their experience changed your experience. And that's what I'm looking to do here. What is it going to take? What kinds of experiences that I have that I go through thinking that might be beneficial in your life to help change that experience too? So uh, whether there's any meaning to that or not, I made the meaning up. I'm going to make the declaration that it does mean something. That's what it's supposed to be. This guy spinning out as I'm talking about it in front of me kind of adds to that. So whether it does mean anything or not to anybody else, I don't know. But to me, it does mean something. And it's fun, and it adds to my life. So what meaning will you make out of it? What meaning will you make out of things in your life that might help change you in the way you think about stuff for the better? All right, so since this is the initial podcast, video cast, and you're getting a little great view here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head to the headwaters because I've got about 20 gallons of water to fill up. We fill up at the headwaters in Mount Shasta, and uh, it's like the purest, coldest water. It's been underground anywhere from 50 to 400 years. I don't know how they tell that. It's interesting. But there's something uh, real unique about the water. People come here from all over the world. When they get here, one of the first thing they do is go to the headwater to get the waters and to drink it. And there's something that happens to you when you drink it. I don't know what it is. But again, it could be made up meaning in the mind. But there's enough people that we've known throughout the years. We take them there and they drink it. They can feel it in their body. They can feel it in their mind. There's something about this water that energizes you or makes you feel better. Interesting was I was uh, listening to Patrick Flanagan micro clusters uh, apparently he's done all kinds of stuff for nasa and the government and he was talking about how when you juice that it releases some kind of like hydrogen minus molecule that when you first have fresh juice what it does is it really invigorates you and it's different than leaving the refrigerator all day and i think something like that's going on with this water you know over time you don't get the hit off of it it's not the same you have a cold glass so it tastes really good it's the best water you'll taste uh, but it doesn't have that initial hit so let's go down to the headwaters, where it all starts. The headwaters of the Sacramento River, the Sacred River, Sacramento Sacred, and uh, fill up 20 gallons of water and get some fresh water, take some drinks off there and show you what I do. Initial podcast. We'll pick up from the headwaters. All right, we're at the city park. And uh, waiting for the train to go by. Train goes by several times a day, maybe 10, as many as 20, depending on how busy things are. Okay, here we are at the headwaters. It's usually a lot more accessible. I park up there, but uh, no can do today. My car was sliding down that hill. It's so icy from the melt, and it starts to harden up with the water. So I figured if I parked over there, which I could, the most 
the chances are somebody else coming down that hill a little faster than I am is going to smack into my car. So decided to carry it. So you got a little bit of a walk. Here's the bottles. Four bottles. We'll bring them over there and cart one back at a time. A little bit of exercise today. Okay, we made it. You can see my car back there. I don't know if you can in between. That path is really slippery. This is all ice up in here. So, this is the headwaters in the Sacramento River. You can see they've built a nice place where in the summertime you come and sit. This water, I think, comes out at about 34, 36 degrees. A lot of people go right up into that hole up there, or that one over there, to get the water. But this one's designed pretty well to put a five gallon bucket down in there without getting your hand too cold. Because if you're putting your hand in there for uh, a long period of time, and I mean a long period is 15 seconds, 30 seconds by a minute, your hand's numb. And uh, But this is the headwater, so you carry it. Be careful with your step here too on the rocks. Let's yeah, see if I can set it up to view. This is the end of today's podcast. Please go to the meditation, and we look forward to hearing from you at mark at markjryan.com.